His career began when he was only 12 years old and ended with one of the greatest victories in naval history. An aggressor by nature, he was determined to annihilate his enemy. In private life, he could be arrogant and ruthless. His affair with a married woman scandalized the nation. He saved Britain from invasion and gave her command of the seas for well over a century. Horatio Nelson was born in Burnham Thorpe, North Norfolk, in 1758, and spent most of his childhood within walking distance of the sea. He had ten brothers and sisters, but his mother, Catherine, was dead by the time Nelson was nine, and it was her brother who would become the biggest influence in the boy's life. From an early age, Nelson was desperate to join the Navy, not unusual for boys in those days and it was his uncle Morris who would open the door to his early naval career. Morris Suckling was a sea officer, and when he was given a new ship, the young Horatio pleaded to be allowed to join him. Suckling finally agreed, but didn't think his young nephew was equipped to cope with life in the Navy. What has the poor Horace done who is so weak that he above the rest should be sent to rough it out at sea? Do let him come and the first time we go into action, a cannonball may knock off his head and provide for him at once. Despite what his uncle thought, Nelson had taken the first step of any would-be naval officer. He had found himself a captain to take him to sea. Suckling took his nephew on board his new ship and rated him midshipman. For the 12-year-old Nelson, this was an amazing new world. But even though he was part of the captain's staff and probably marked out for greater things, the first six years of his naval career would be tough. Nelson started off on the bottom rung and therefore he would be, for instance, sleeping in a hammock which was only 14 inches, the, the space he had was only 14 inches wide. The noise would have been something he wouldn't have been used to. The smells are something he wouldn't have been used to. This was a time of exploration. It hadn't been long since Captain Cook had discovered Australia, and Nelson, only in his mid-teens, was already travelling the world. Over the next few years, he made astonishing progress, rising to the rank of captain by the time he was only 20. Nelson certainly progressed quickly uh, after he had passed his lieutenant's examination. Um, in part, that was to do no doubt with the influence of his uncle, but patronage was not unusual. But it was also to do with the fact that Nelson was undoubtedly a very capable young officer. Throughout his twenties, Nelson served in the Baltic and Canada, but it was a trip to the West Indies that marked a turning point in his personal life. This wasn't a good time for Nelson. He was outspoken, always questioning orders and aggravating his superiors. He felt lonely and isolated in his professional life, but soon found distraction when he met Frances Nisbet, a young widow living in the West Indies. Horatio Nelson looked on her as uh, an ideal naval wife once they started to get to know each other. Uh, she was genteel, amiable, um, and all the things that Nelson felt that he could show esteem for. And so they, uh, they got to know each other better and got married. The newlyweds returned to England and set up home in Norfolk. Nelson's ship was no longer needed, and he was faced with unemployment. For five years, he wrote endless letters, begging the Admiralty for another ship. He was desperate to be back at sea. Then something happened that was going to change Nelson's life forever, the French Revolution. Soon, Britain, which refused to recognize the new French Republic, was at war with France and its ally, Spain. This was Nelson's big break. After five long years, war with France in 1793 gave Nelson the springboard for what was to be then a remarkable career. He would have been elated at the time. He'd waited so long for a ship. Now he was going to go into action. <laughs> 
and that must have been a marvellous feeling for him. Nelson was given command of the Agamemnon, the smallest ship in the fleet. Not long into the campaign, he was offered a bigger ship, but refused, choosing instead to stay with his men. When Nelson was surrounded by people who he trusted and who he got on with, he was immensely loyal. There are very few examples of Nelson being disliked by his crew. It's been pointed out that ships under his command always suffered fewer uh, illnesses uh, than comparable either ships or squadrons. Uh, what Nelson understood was that uh, the fighting effectiveness of his ship, of his squadron, and later of his fleet, depended on the quality of his officers and his men. Nelson's mission was to fight the revolutionary French, among them a 24-year-old artillery officer, Napoleon Bonaparte. This was the beginning of a historical conflict between two military leaders that would last for the next 12 years, and the costs would be high. In August 1794, Nelson was engaged in one of his rare land conflicts on the west coast of Corsica, where he sustained the first of a series of injuries. The Battle of Calvi secured the island for the British, but Nelson lost the sight in his right eye. Soon after that, on St. Valentine's Day, 1797, Nelson came head to head with a Spanish fleet off the southwest corner of Portugal. In the battle that followed, he took one of the biggest gambles of his naval career. In the middle of the conflict, he ignored an order to maintain his position, a decision which could have resulted in a court-martial. Nelson moved out of line to engage with three huge ships at the end of the Spanish division. It was a, a marvellous piece of anticipation. I think what this shows is a, a real tactical appreciation of the situation and a sense of self-belief that he knew, and he was right, that this was what had to be done at that particular moment. Now, that actually took courage. He challenged established views. He challenged conventional wisdom. If he thought that the big objective was going to be compromised by um, doing the conventional things, then he wouldn't do those conventional things. That is one of the great aspects of Nelson's combat leadership, that intuition. He just knew what to do and when to do it. Nelson made his name at the Battle of Cape St. Vincent as a brave naval commander who always led by example and from the front. He led a boarding party across first one enemy ship and then proceeded to use it as a bridge to capture another. Nelson had a reputation for leading from the front. Um, very often he was advised against it by other officers um, in his squadron or his fleet. But uh, Nelson always wanted to lead and would expose himself to danger. Um, these ships were dangerous places. 